How's everybody doing? How is the first week of 2019? NGB, good to see you. How's the TV? And did you did you guys see what they're doing with with uh, what Nvidia is doing with Adaptive Sync or FreeSync? Damn, why did I buy that fucking? G-Sync monitor, I could have just waited, I could have just bought a fucking TV that, that supports FreeSync. God damn it, I could have bought a, a 4K TV that, that supports FreeSync, I think. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, so let's say hi to everyone in chat. I see Devness. Devness, if you're still here. So Devness was number one. This thing I just picked up from the mailbox. I mean, it looks like any other priority mail. That's because I don't want to show the other side. That's where our addresses are. Okay, there we dig Talisman Solutions. Beadlocks, Black Turk, and Mellow was here. He's gone to bed. Mighty Fine Shindig, Purple, Red Hawk. And yes, I know, God damn it, NVIDIA. So that's why they were just fucking purging all the G-Sync monitors. Maybe I should have, I should have waited. You know, I could have gone. Like I said, I, I, I you know, I would have preferred getting a, a big, you know, 4K screen over an ultra wide, or just get a bigger ultra wide or a cheaper ultra wide. Instead of spending fucking seven hundred dollars on this thing, oh, I mean, it's great news. Just sucks for. Everyone who are a bit more cynical and just like, oh. You're not actually here. Okay, well, we won't open this up right now, then we'll, we'll wait a little bit. I know. Redhawk, at least you didn't get cucked. You just... You just bought a, a, an LGC8 that was, what, was it $300 difference? <laughs> you bought it, and then a few days later, for Cyber Monday, it went down by $300. Okay, and um, so does the C8 support adaptive sync? I don't think so, right? But anyway, so today we have a few things. I love you. 11 months in a row. NGB, thank you so much. Man, it's been 11 months with NGB. That's almost, that's, that's almost a year. That's pretty insane. Six degrees, how are you doing? Okay, so few things. Devna sent something that we're gonna unbox in a bit. And then we have a Zephyr round two that we're gonna unbox. And I guess we can just go ahead with the Zephyr. Let's just go ahead with the Zephyr. I don't wanna oh, earn enough yeah. stream too long. Kelly, thank you so much. Thousand and one bits, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's just go ahead and unbox it. I did think about doing GMK white on black as well, but we'll see if we have time for that. I don't want to stream for too long. I have some things to get done tonight. And and yeah, so hopefully the stream won't take too long. I don't want to drag it on for too long. And then I think I'd rather just stream the, the white on black on another day. So it's in maybe Wednesday or something like that. So I have to get some things done today and tomorrow. I'm, I'm actually thinking about finally getting a, going out to get a haircut tomorrow. Finally going to a barber. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll do it. New year, gotta try something new, right? It's been three, four years since I last went to a barber. I've been cutting my own hair. Uh, ever, ever since, I think, sophomore year high, uh, of college, sophomore. Junior, sophomore year, yeah. It's been a long time. But, you know, I think I should finally just go get some. I, I, I probably just will just get a cut, you know, this time. And then I'll probably just trim it myself after for, you know, maybe another year or something. Yeah, so. Might as well, you know, new year. I'm thinking this year we'll, we'll try a few new things. And don't wanna. Routine is sometimes bad, right? So, I mean, even this hair, you know, 
I had the same hairstyle for five years at least or something crazy five six years same hairstyle and I finally changed it up you know a few months ago and then thinking you know what I'll just go get a haircut and and you know try something new okay, so let's open this one I would it would be easier for me to just open it up from the other side but it has my address on it so I don't do that. Gideon how's it going it has been a while David Nix need to get a haircut too. Do you have a, a favorite barber or anything like that? So my brother usually goes to this Asian place to get his haircut because they have a, I think like 10 or $12 Tuesdays or something like that. So maybe I'll do that. I don't think they offer a happy ending though. I think that's next door. Get a fresh ass fade. And no, I'm not the first to get the Zephyr. Or did you mean the Zephyr round two? Are you thinking of the Xeno maybe? Cause no, we're not doing a Xeno, this is a Zephyr. Don't like being ahead of time. Ooh, Striker, you're in Australia right now. Very nice. Are you, did, uh, did, did your company end up paying for the trip or did you have to pay for most of it yourself? Dominic says I go to the same place, but a specific person. Yeah, barbers are, it's hard to find a good one. And uh, once you find a good one, you know, it's hard to... It gets difficult. I know people who drive 3-4 hours just to get a haircut from, you know, where they used to live or whatever. PC Low Letter, how's it going? How was the first week back at work? Was it... Was it terrible? What do you mean, different style? Oh, I mean, my hair, I, I had a faux hawk for, let me think. So I had the faux hawk before I came to college, before I came to the US. So yeah, over six years, that one same hairstyle. I haven't had a haircut in three years. PC Low Letter, you said you're, you said you're growing your hair out for, to, to donate again, right? Was that you or was it someone else? I'm pretty sure that was you, right? Because we were talking to, I think, Shay Ross about it, and I, I think you said you were doing that. Get into that the same barber for like the past 10 years. Nice. I wish I could say that. I unfortunately, yeah, I, you know, I've moved quite a bit, so no, no same barber for me. Yeah, one of the, the, you know, the reason why I started cutting my own hair was twofold. First of all, it was way cheaper to cut my own hair. Second, the barbers in Abilene were fucking garbage. And you know, because the town is in predominantly white, so no one knows how to fucking cut Asian hair. Cause yeah, our scalp, the, the, the way the hair is, you know, even the hair follicles themselves are quite different, and then the, the, the way the hair grows on the scalp also very different. And so, yeah, she, the, the, the barbers there were just not very good. And so yeah, I did a better job than, than the fucking barbers in Abilene. And that's why even my, International friends are coming to me to get a haircut, so I'll give some of them a haircut. A PC little letter. I've, I've, I think um, they said that East Asians aren't great for for donating hair, though, right? Because of hair, it's the the follicles are too thin. Uh, I think certain ethnicities are better at the, or races, I guess. Or better for that stuff. I think like Chinese hair is apparently not great because yeah, the the follicles themselves are pretty thin. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. That zeal tape. Oh yes. Yeah. So the packaging is pretty nice. It comes in this DHL Express box, and of course, it should it arrived in like a day or something like that. And. Got the zeal box which fits nicely over this. You got this box that fits over this box, so it's basically triple boxed. You get your Zephyr triple box, pretty hardcore, I'd say. Then we did my buddy just the other said he waited three hours for his barber to cut his hair. 
I guess I guess for a guy it, it's kind of worse. How often does he get a haircut? Cause the 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 people that I know of that that drive like three, four, five hours to get a haircut, they're usually women, and so I kind of get that. You know, it's like you might as well make a trip out of it, right? You 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 you're not cutting your hair every month. You know, you cut your hair every few months. You know, so I guess a uh, three hour trip or three hour drive. I guess it, it's a whole day trip, right? Or a whole weekend thing. You know, a whole weekend thing in like you know every three months is not so bad. But like, I have to cut my hair every month for a month and a half. Uncle B, how's it going? Happy New Year to you. Tell says my hair is gone. I did actually try shaving my whole head off uh, one summer. So me and my younger brother, we both did that. Uh, it was kind of fun. I actually sometimes do miss that. It was just, once you, you, I think everyone needs to try just having their heads clean, you know, shaved, shaved off, their hair shaved off. Just, just once, at least once in your life. Everyone has to try that. It feels so nice. You shave everything off, and then you can just rub your own head. It's oh. No, you just gotta try it out. It's it's really not bad. I'm not saying it'll look great. I'm saying that it is a unique human experience, and that everyone should at least try. You know, I I, I you know. I didn't like the way I looked with that with that hairstyle. I mean, I don't even like the way I look right now, but <laughs> that's a different story. But anyway, uh, yeah, you shave it off, and it's just you know, it's just a fun thing. You feel a bit more empathy for for people in chemo. But uh, Anthony with a perp. PC Little Letter says I look even worse with my head shaved. I think I think I actually don't look terrible with my head shaved. I just look like a really happy monk. You know, I just look like a monk that's never fasted a day, a day in his life. Do you have a Do you have a huge forehead? Like a five? Are you a five head? I think my head's fine for going bald because I have a pretty round head. So if I just cut everything off, it's really not terrible. It's just a big basketball, basically. Pen of water, how's it going? So this is this board belongs to Pen of water, and he's in chat right now. Six degrees says I go to a different barber every time. I want to try something new. See, I think I used to think you know I'll just get the same haircut all the time, and then now I'm thinking you know what I might as well try you know like this time I might as well try something different, right? And also God made it. He says I have so many bumps on my scalp from random head trauma. Oh no. Wait, from when you were a kid or when you, is that a recent thing? I think I think my head's pretty clean for the most part. Then again though, I don't go out to, to do any strenuous activity, so you know. It's really not so bad. Okay, so anyway, this is what we're unboxing and it's the Zephyr. So you've got the tape. And I think the tape was the the, the not tape, the the little what do you even call this thing? Sleeve? No. But anyway, this thing was put in upside down. Oh my god, can you believe the QC? The QC has fallen so far. But yeah, it had the it had this thing up. I think, if I'm not wrong, if you rewind, I think this thing was upside down. But it, uh, I'm just... That doesn't matter at all. So the Zephyr. Let's see. This thing isn't cheap. Ooh, look at that. Nice box of foam. Wow, look at that presentation. Can I? Okay, there we go. Zoom out. Six degrees says, am I the only one willing to spend $50 on a haircut? I mean, it depends on how often you get a haircut. And Thoughtbot, hello. Welcome, welcome. Who else is here? Normal forehead, but a huge head. Huh. And Alex made it as well. How's it going? Keep eating those pizza and onion rings and you look like a Buddha. I already look like a, what do they call this? The, the smiling Buddha or whatever. So let's check out the accessories. I guess I've got a zeal sticker because why not? I, I honestly I will say I don't understand the obsession of stickers. I I really do not. I don't get it at all. I know people love it. I don't. It's just to me. It's just stuff. 
right? and then people like to sticker bomb their things and why or, or they put stickers all over their desk which is like garbage uh, but yeah I, I don't get the obsession with stickers I get why they want to do it though it's like you know for the few people who, who actually jerk off to these things but yeah I personally I, I, just, I don't really get stickers you know I really don't understand it you got another sticker over here look at that got a little NSFW so Zelio spelled like filio An eggplant through the top of the switch see these things are cool but again I don't you know like what am I gonna put it on right like, I'm just collecting them and they just I, just I know I have a drawer full of just stickers and then I just throw them out when I move or something and we've got the 3M rubber feet these we're actually going to put on today Gideon says, I had it done once by an Indian barber just because I told him to cut short and he started shaving from the middle. There was no saving from that. Oh, man. Man, if you want to talk about haircuts from back home, got some some terrible experiences. Yeah, Indian barbers. I had, so they, you know, it's pretty much the cheapest you can get, right? Uh, especially in Malaysia. So Gideon, I believe, is from Singapore. So that's why he, I th are you from Singapore? I think so, right? And or at least you live in Singapore, and and yeah. So when I was a kid, my my mom took us to a an Indian barber, and they just fucking just cut like that was a, a they they actually cut my forehead instead of my hair. They just fucking. Just, and then you know I was just fucking bleeding at at a at a you know I was four or five years old just trying to get a fucking haircut, and I wasn't even the the, the ADHD kind or you know I wasn't a hyperactive kid and you know it was hard to hold me down or whatever you know I was a, I was a pretty quiet kid so they just fucked up, and yeah I think that was the last time I went to an Indian barber. They're pretty un un unapologetic about it as well. Uncle B says, I had a five hit even as a kid. A bit of Eddie Munster too. Going shade ball is an improvement. See, I know I know some I, I, I know some people who are five hits or six hits or whatever. And you know, the easiest way is to just try to get some hair to, to you know, there are hairstyles to try and cover that up, or you know, there are different ways. But then they, they pick hairstyles that emphasize their forehead. Uh, and that's like, you know, and then they make the hair go really tall, and it's like, why, dude? Now you just, you know, you just like, look at me. This is the Z65 PCB. We're gonna plug it in to test it out. Uh, actually, we can just do that right now, right? So you can see. Okay, I will say, first of all, I actually don't like the way it looks in person, the PCB. So. The PCB itself, the design itself, Wilba did an excellent job. Don't get me wrong, he did an he does amazing st work with PCBs. All right, look at look at that. That is insane. Look at the traces. And of course, you got the Wilba logo over here. It says hating, which is black gold. Zero sixty five PCB revision one. Got the reset button over here, All right? So it, it's it's really nice, and from what I understand, what Wilba has been doing with his PCBs is he's making it so that he can easily change the sizes and layouts of the PCBs without having to reposition, you know, all the major components. And so it's really cool. That means that you know. 
if he wants to make it TKL, he can just kind of just add stuff to it instead of having to re uh, reposition all the components and everything. And then if he wants to make it smaller, he can also do that. And, and so the PCB design itself, like I said, is actually really nice. And in pictures and in the renders and everything look really nice. I don't like the finish they picked on it. They It has this weird screen over it. Like a film. I don't know what you would call it. It's like a... What would I call it? Silk screen? Some screen thing, right? But anyway, yeah, I, re I really don't like the, 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 the coding on it. I really, really don't like the coding on it. I think it... So you can see it's no longer black. It just looks like this weird off black that's kind of gray. Like, I mean, just look at, just compare it to, just look at that. Even paper black is noticeably darker. See any compared to just a Logitech mouse? Just look at that. This is black. And then you got this. And if you want to compare it to a phone screen, look how black this is. And then you've got this. So, and you can see these weird streaks with the coating. So yeah, it just makes everything look kind of blurry. I, 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 I really wish they would change it. It just, I don't know, it, it kind of ruins it for me. It, it went from, you know, being the, the sexiest PCB to just kind of. This, yeah, this, it's like Beadlock says, you know, it's like someone just took clear coat and just sprayed over it and, and yeah, it's not as nice. Even, see, this is how a, oh, that's a very dusty PCB. Very, very dusty PCB. But okay, see, so this is kind of a typical black PCB. And you've got the Zephyr PCB. But you see that? Yeah, so that's kind of my main gripe with the PCB. But let's plug it in. It has RGB, per key RGB, not just underglow. Pretty cool. And from what I understand, Zeal tests each of his PCBs before he sends them out. <laughs> Panda Water says, I got a hundred dollar haircut once. Not worth it for me because I end up getting the most basic haircut. Stick a bomb in a PVD weight. Oh man, yeah, don't give me, yeah, yeah. Stick, people sticker bombing things. I don't know, I, just, I really don't like it. Like I get if you're sticker bombing some, some ugly, or a cheap looking thing, right? Like that I understand. But when people start sticker bombing just things that already looked okay, it's like, why? What have you done? Yeah, I, I, I think the most expensive haircut I got was, I think after tip it was 30 something dollars. I'm pretty sure that was the most expensive one I ever got. I didn't really need anything expensive though. Okay, so let's test the PCB real quick. I'll look at chat. Six degrees says, I generally avoid barbers as a rule of thumb now. They're not so good at Asian hair. Okay, so you mean like a hairstylist, right? When I say barber, I meant like all of them. But, I, you know, because like the, the one I got, that haircut, the, the one that was, you know, o almost $40. Yeah, that was at a supposedly better place with a hairstylist or whatever. But yeah, just like six degrees, just like you said, they, 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 they're they really bad at Asian hair. So that's why I didn't go back. I was just like, this is just lame. Like, I can do a better job my, myself. Yeah, that's why you have to, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're Asian, you have to find some, an Asian person, someone, or at least someone who specializes in cutting Asian hair. Oh, you can see caps lock changes everything to red. Look at that.
Hannah Water, since it's still here in chat, do you know when the switches are gonna arrive for this thing? Just so I can let everyone know kind of when we will be streaming this thing. So the PCP basically supports just one bottom row, which is a plus or minus depending on how you look at it. I mean, I don't like the layout it supports, so it's kind of a minus, but I do prefer uh, less supported layouts for PCBs and plates, especially plates. All right, so everything works. That's great. Solder mask, there we go. The mask. Thanks, yeah, I, I really don't like the, like I'm sure it looked great, it, it support, you know, the bear thing looks great, but once you put this mask, the coat over it, yeah, that's not great. It needs to look green instead of black. Well, I don't know about green. Okay, I guess, yeah, I don't know about green, but it does just give it kind of a weird, I guess I can kind of see what you mean by just a little bit green. Maybe it appeared, it, and I guess, you know, everyone's eyes have been recalibrated because of the Necro unboxing and stuff. Okay, so let's let's move on. Got the PCB there. Wow, just look at this. You even get a nice little ribbon. Right, and and you might not know, but but Zeal says a little prayer with every ribbon he ties up, and he gives it a light little peck. MLG Pro Lawyer, how's it going? So did your Overwatch sets arrive? VPS says, I prefer the purple, it was signature, black PCBs are diamond doesn't now. Oh yeah, I mean, purple PCBs are also becoming kind of common though. All right, we've got these Zeus stabilizers. And see, so the box, it's designed for your Zeus stabilizers. You can see, you can see the wires over here. So you got three, two U wires, one seven U wire. And it's nice that they have them pack like that instead of just throwing them all assembled into a bag and you know risk you risk bending the, 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 the stabilizer wires so again really incredible packaging right okay so let's open up this thing it's kind of stuck green savage how's it going and g8 333E as well. To the end of the month. Okay, yeah, pen order, yeah. Just, yeah, then, then, then don't worry too much about it. I just thought, you know, it was arriving this week or next week, but well, if you're not in a hurry, then, then, yeah, then I can just tell everyone, yeah, you know, end of the month or something. All right, okay, so let's see what's in here. Also, if you're wondering why Red Hawk's talking about hair so passionately, you should see, have you seen, have you seen his hair? It's got glorious locks. If, if anyone should make a hair donation, it should be him. All right, so over here, we've got nothing. So what I'm assuming is, this is supposed to be the box where he puts your switches in if you get switches with your Zeph Zephyr. But of course, we didn't get switches with this order, so the box is empty. Which is still kind of strange. It's like, why did you just give us an empty box? Red Hawk, come on, man. Think about think about all those kids of cancer. You should be donating your hair. What would what would what would Muhammad do? 
Or maybe it's supposed to be Kit Kat in here, but no, we didn't receive any Kit Kat at all. So usually Zeal gives out uh, matcha green tea Kit Kat with, with all the Zephyr orders, but He saw my 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 Zylan and 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 Zilio builds, and he saw he he heard that I wouldn't use him personally, so he's like, "Fuck this guy." No, I'm just kidding. Now he yeah, we didn't get any Kit Kat with this one, unfortunately, or fortunately, because I would eat that. So yeah, very nice, thick, dense foam. One of the better boxes we've seen. Trashorama, how's it going? He said, I saw on these boutique keyboard kit vendors, how many are usually produced in a run? Oh, definitely not a thousand. Definitely not. You can typically expect around 50, I'd say, is a good number, typically. Apple level packaging. The packaging is definitely very nice. Okay, so now for the board itself. Oh, wow. Oh wow. So is this, hold on. I have a question. Is this supposed to be purple? Or is this supposed to be blue? This is supposed to be blue, right? I'm just, I'm just checking. Does it look purple to you? <laughs> Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna see if it's purple <laughs> because I'm professional to calibrate. And yeah, VPR. Yeah, sometimes a little, little as ten. It really depends if if you know. If I ran the keyboard thing and that's my first project, I would not do a hundred. There's no way I would do a hundred. That's red on my screen. Doesn't work on me, says Red Hawk. That looks purple. Because I can tell you that definitely does not look. I'm not saying it's not purpley at all. I'm just saying that. I, I might not call it purple. Oh man. Okay, so there are a few things that, okay, we'll, 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 we'll take it one step at a time. But first of all, let's, this is the eggplant zeal sticker. You can see. This is definitely a dark purple. And you got that. GMK Phantom Box. GMK Nautilus Box. Let's take the plastic off. It, yeah, it's definitely closer to dark blue.
GA33E says more purple than blue if you ask me. But you're not seeing it in person though. You're seeing it on your screen. I am looking at this. And even on this calibrated screen, it looks blue. Chokan, how's it going? So, real quick, please don't forget to check out our good friend Chokan's YouTube channel. He has the best YouTube, uh, keyboard related content on YouTube. Okay, play this effect in the color. Okay, so, I'm not trying to joke around, but see, look at that. I mean, I would put it closer to blue. Let me see if I have anything that is recognizably, that has a distinct purple. A zeal switch, how about that? This is a box navy in the bottom and then there's a zeal stamp. See this is what I assume what the color was supposed to be. It's, it's a very, this I think it's the 67 gram. I think the 78 is even darker than this one. It's supposed to be a very deep purple. I'm, I'm just saying that I get what they were trying to go with or sort of get what they're trying to go with it, but I think it ended up being closer to, yes, like a royal blue. It, it came out closer to, it's like a purpley blue than a bluish purple. And it is, I think, uh, too blue to, for most people to even call it purple. I think if you see it in person, I think, you would not call it purple. Indigo is, is the best, not even the best description for it, because honestly, it's even closer to blue than indigo. And then, okay, so, but, it is a nice color. I'm not saying it's an ugly color. I'm just saying that if you went into it thinking, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. Oh, oh no, I don't have plum on hand anymore, so I can't show. What's a compared to plum? Uh, what's a purple? But yeah, it looks like a royal or a navy blue. A green savage, I would agree. Yeah, in in person, that's that's really what it looks like. See, maybe this background is throwing you off. So, like I said, you know, let's put something white behind it. The lights are still on. That's a problem. So it looks more blue and bright lighting. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we can we can turn on some lighting. And again, though, if he if he is told everyone, you know, then it's whatever. I'm just I'm just showing you my thoughts about this thing, right? Like my impressions of it, what I'm looking at it, and then you know, just in case other people are like, well, maybe he's used being, you know, he's maybe he's lying. Maybe he's actually purple or whatever. But yeah, I can tell you in person, it definitely looks more blue than purple, for sure. I don't think there's any. You can say anything, you can see even, look at that. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, I just, I really don't see anyone. Uh, if, they, if they see it in person, I really don't think anyone would call it purple. I just really don't think so. Again, they might say that's a purpley blue. That that's that's it. That I don't think anyone would call it purple. So if you are expecting a purple, then it really sucks. See, 
Okay, purple. You have purple in your name. What does this look like to you? Does this look more blue or look more purple? Is it more blue? The lights off. Totally blue now. Oh no. Yeah. See. Okay. Let me. What do I have that is purple? I just realized I don't have a lot of purple things. You know, maybe what we need is we need purple 710 to come here and then he can give us his real opinion on it. But, okay, so, if you're, you know, if you're into Tupperware, hey, see, so we've got, this is a, is this called magenta? We've got magenta, we've got purple, and we've got a kind of a, Purpley blue. Lavender. That is purple. See, but. It looks closer to this, right? Yes, it's a pea cup. Yes, absolutely. I put it in here. Yes. But yeah, just look at that. It looks closer to this than either of these so I'm, I'm just helping people who might be interested in it to or, or are getting a purple zephyr to, to, to at least get there okay hfo alpha okay i can yeah i can if i know what i can do that i have yeah yeah let me bring that And actually, if you're talking about keycap sets, I would say this color is going to be closer to GMK Laser. Uh, than Hyperfuse. So if you were looking for a set to match GMK Laser, hey, there we go. And it keeps the container around for those long streams so it doesn't need to pause. Oh no, I'm getting figured out. I need to empty it though. It's full now. Loba Loba, hello, hello, and Poner as well. Oh, Jimmy Necro turned out great. The thing is, it's pointless to search GMK Phantom because GMK Phantom just looks kind of black. Purple says blue, lol. I'm the type of person to buy anything purple. Okay, so if you were looking to match Hyperfuse Origins, then I. Oh, do I have another bag with. Then I will say you would be disappointed because Hyperfuse Origins is actually even more. So if you want to sit, talk about purple in terms of blue, you know, in between blue and red, of course, color is not that simple. But if you want to think of it that way, you know, in terms of blue and red, this is redder. This is even redder than the original than the original Hyperfuse G than the original GMK Hyperfuse, right? Because that's the, the the big color change that they did. They they matched it with the actual purple instead of the GMK stock purple and so this purple is even redder or pinker or whatever you're gonna call it closer to magenta than than the original GMK Hyperfuse. The original GMK Hyperfuse would be the color on I think Skeletor that 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 that, that is one purple yeah something like that I can't remember but 
Yeah, this does not match it. This, this, this will not match. Right. Look at that. I said, I'm not saying it doesn't, uh, 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 like, it'll look ugly again. I'm just saying that it, it definitely is not uh, the same shade almost at all. Look at that. So this looks like a link that you've clicked on and this looks like a link that you haven't clicked on. Need the hex code. Oh my god, enough about more and more talk about Tattoo Girl. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely closer to GMK Laser. The alphas of GMK Laser, I believe. Okay, now let's move on to the Anodizing. Actually, let's put on the rubber feet first, right? Let's do that. Rudius, how's it going? No, it's just this kind of a running joke. Basically, Tally, a Talisman Solutions in chat really likes young girls with tattoos. And so he always talks, he, he always wants me to talk about this one classmate that I have that, you know, it's one of the most annoying people that I've met, but he always wants to fantasize uh, situations with that, that one girl with tattoos. He likes them a little bit rebellious. So Ugrosa, how's it going? You can see the PVD go to the bottom over there. Wow, you can see my triple chin. Alright, so first impressions of the anodizing, honestly not great. Uh, and this is not about the color, this is about the extra anodizing. Okay, so we've got a few things to point out first, real quick. We've got some looks like I don't know if you would call them scratch. Uh, I guess yeah, you can call them scratches or nicks or whatever. Look at that on this side. You can already see it. It's on the ch thin chamfer over here. It's on over here. And then yeah, the anodizing. So, this is not the first Zephyr I'm looking at, right? Uh, this is the second Zephyr. Second Zephyr in a month, actually, because the first time I saw a Zephyr was the one Chewie brought over. He had me desolder the switches on there. So that was actually my first time seeing the Zephyr in person. That was the Zephyr round one, I believe. And then that was supposed to be a B stock kind of thing. That's why it was cheaper. This is about the A stock. This is the is round two, and I thought, okay, maybe that was just a B stock thing. Let's wait for round two, uh, A stock to, to really make a judgment. And I think that since we have this thing here, I want to say the anodizing really is not not great. Look at that. Look at the different shades that you see. This is not this is not my finger oils or whatever. Right? We can try to wipe it off. And again, I understand this is a dif difficult color to, to get right, 
So now we're gonna talk about color. Because uh, even the other one was supposed to be just silver. It was supposed to be like a dark silver or whatever. And yeah, that one had the same problems. With a lot of streaking, a lot of just patchiness with the colors. A lot, a lot of streaking. Yeah, look at that. You can see this line of just, this. Is, there's this one line that's even bluer than the rest. You see that? sides you can see it also has that problem see this blue line over here it's about about three to four millimeters thick maybe this this stripe over here and then there's some spots that are duller than others and yeah just lots of just look at that see this whole line here yeah we'll look at the bottom in a bit let me let me go through the the sides and everything and then again let me wipe as we go Look at that. Now we've got this dark stripe running across. You see that? We, have, we don't see any pitting yet, so it's good. But over here, you will see. You see these two? So I'm, I'm trying to figure out if it's just someone's fingernails or. You see these striped things, right? See that? One over there and then one over here. One here, one here. So let's try to wipe it. Because on first glance, it looks like someone just scratched a fingernail over it. But I, I don't think that's what it is. Because see, it's still there. One line here, one line here. It looks like scratches, right? Yeah, I, I agree, Radius. We've got a speck over here that I don't think we can rub off. See that over here? The white speck. There's just no color there. Or was this scratched? Something. One over there. And of course, the bottom. Let's take a look at the bottom. Of course, we're gonna clean this out later, right? But some sort of tiny blemish over here. Let's unscrew this thing. We'll take a look at the the, the construction and stuff like that. And of course, we're not building this thing today. I'm just taking a look at it. You see the difference in color through the screen? Yes. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of unfortunate. Dots on the edges are part of play. Which which dots are we talking about? These dots or okay, so let's take it apart. But unfortunately, I I just the anodizing just really isn't like I would call it average. Honestly, I would call it average. And again, I get that this is way more diff. This is a more difficult color. It is, you know, you. This is only the second run, so maybe they'll improve in future runs, whatever. But right now, I'm just comparing them. Right, let's 
Talk about just the anodizing. So I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning up this left side. The right side probably have my, you know, finger oils and stuff like that, but look at that. See any crazy lines or anything like that over here? Okay, I'm gonna wipe the whole thing too. So let me wipe this side. Look at that. And this thing is, 80 bucks. I mean, I bought it for 80, I think. Maybe it's 88, but you can get the, you know, I, I only buy stuff from community fans on sale. But, but look at that. That is, see, okay, so you've got this, which is like 80, 90 bucks. And again, I'm, I'm cleaning it up. I'm cleaning it up. And you can see, it's like a layer cake. Same thing at the back, let me clean the right side. So you can still see the different layers of color. And some spots are duller than others. Yeah, so like I'm not shitting you, right? Like this 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 tofu that I have is incredible in terms of the finish. Just ridiculously good anodizing. That's why it's really annoying when when I see people talk about Oh, all KB fans is anodizing is bad. All of them bad. And then all of this, you know, other brand or make or whatever is good. And and it's usually by people who have not seen those boards in person, which really annoys me. You know, I am doing my best to show you guys how they compare, you know, on camera. If you can see it on camera in person, you can definitely see it. China number one. Yeah, and and which is why you know I'm I'm I, I get that that you know this is the second run, whereas with KBD fans and stuff, you know they've they've been using either the same manufacturer or just the same couple of you know two or three manufacturers, and they make a lot a lot, right? And of course they have. You know, I've seen boards with Q QC problems and stuff like that. And so they have way more experience for sure when it comes to, say, like, anodizing and stuff like that. Like, for sure, you can't, you know, you can't argue against just volume. Like, if they're just making a ton, I'm sure they can improve the process or nail it down or, you know, afford, you know, to invest in, in you know, better QC and things like that. Like, I get that. Tony says, and Tony, well, hello, AXM2 as well. He says, I got scratches on my round one Zephyr 2. So Zero PC is really bad at QC. That is, that is unfortunate to hear. Yeah, so I thought the, and again, I haven't bought any boards myself from him. This is only the second Zephyr that I'm seeing. So it is, a shame, you know. The thing is, of course, you might think, okay, you know, why am I paying so much then? 
Well, there are a few things that, that definitely are unique to this board. And I think that is actually innovative and stuff like that. But I would, re I really hope that, that people would take just anodizing and, and fin finishing, making sure there aren't at least scratches and nicks and stuff like that. You know, those are the kind of things that, that really, sh you know, it should be just like, it should be prioritized. It should be just like, you know, okay, let's, this shouldn't be a, 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 a problem if, if you get what I'm saying. It's like if you buy a, a, let's see, let's see. Maybe a car or whatever. And you just like, you know, at least the least you could do is you know, not have scratches on there or something, right? Like when you're buying a new. Like this is, I've always heard good things about the Zephyr Anodizing. See, that's what I've heard too. That's why I was looking forward to this. And then I'm glad I at least got the Chewy's Zephyr to look at first. Because that kind of tempered my expectations a bit. Because I'm not shocked or anything. I'm just kind of mildly disappointed. You know, it's like it's like if you're a parent and you kind of expect your son, your kid to be an asshole, and then you find out they really are and they do something dumb. You're just like, you know, that's not surprising. It's disappointing, but I'm not shocked anymore. I'm just just a little sad. And yes, Chokan, yeah, that's absolutely if if, if you are able to, to work so closely with the factory then you know, yeah. You can you can get those things done just right. You know, you can just tell them, hey, you know, this is something important. You know, I want you to, to make sure this process is nailed down. This is important to us. You know, at least the, the presentation needs to be done well. Okay, so innovating in what? So we'll show you what the innovations are. Mainly it's the plate, the construction, the construction, the construction. You know, this is if if you're if you're designing a keyboard, you know, you sh that should be a word that you're gonna be thinking of quite a lot. Construction. How do the pieces go together? How does the plate mount? Vlog says you post on Discord. He was having a hard time QCing them, having to send a few back. As you can see, I mean, the Zephyr really isn't, honestly, isn't anything new now, but you can see it has these exposed, I guess, uh, thread points or screw points. Give it that industrial look. So from the front, you can actually see the, the bits of s silver. And one nice thing about this sort of construction, this sort of, you know, how the top meets the bottom. I personally like this, although I don't like the exposed bottom, I would prefer it if this part just covers over, but you know, that's kind of a design thing, right? Uh, this is probably easier to QC though. Because if you want this to cover the bottom, then uh, you need, you probably need this part to stick out a little more. And if you need this part to stick out a little more, then you have to make sure that the upper feet are tall enough, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I like this. I know that Zeal was adamant about not having the ugly side seams. You know, like just a, a typical, I think now some people are calling it a top bottom seam or whatever. So, you know, from what I've heard, Zeal was, you know, he told, cause this was designed by Wilbur. And so Zeal was, you know, I have a few things I, I want, a few things I, I don't want, and I don't want the, the, the fucking basic bitch seam, uh, which are still very popular with Noxury, TGR, quite a few others out there. You know, 
it's just just kind of lazy design honestly and so yeah, so this at least it does this so you don't get the ugly scene problem but of course it still looks like it has a seam because of the anodizing right look at that it looks like it has a line running through it <laughs> which is funny because this line actually looks closer to this color because yeah so these two aren't matched perfectly which again you know with this sort of case design it's not too terrible you can probably even swap out this color and it'd be kind of cool so you swap this with a plus gray or so or whatever but yeah but you know so this color ends up being close to this line over here it's like a suntan line Really says one thing I think KBD fans really need to improve on is the screws. Absolutely horrible. You need to use good steel screws instead of aluminum screws. They provide yes, not just that. So the the screw sizes, so just the type as well. Not even the quality of the screws. Because if I just want to change the quality of the screws, I can do that myself, right? I, I you know I can do that. But if it's something like the size of the screws, they always use screws that are too small, too skinny. I just needle dick screws. I'm like why. Now give me something with a bit more girth. And Tally, thank you so much for the gift sub 22nd. Gift sub to ADB7. Basic bitch seam. Yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly what it is, though. That's like the most basic design thing you can do. ABC screws. Okay, so. We'll talk about the construction you can see already. So, it... Before Zeal showed this, or before the Zephyr was, you know, got into the hands of everyone, we, you know, it was kind of difficult trying to figure out how it was put together. It was all very secretive, and so when when God, Gok, and I were discussing keyboard construction, we we looked at the Zephyr quite a bit. At first, we thought they were doing something we wanted to do, and then we realized, oh, not really. And then and then we thought they had a way more complex design than we, than you know, and. and than what they ended up using. Uh, we thought they used a dovetail construction, which is ridiculous, right? Uh, and, and so of course it ended up being quite a bit simpler than that. It's still nonetheless new, uh, not done by, by anyone else. And then the five millimeter plate, I would say they were the first ones to, to really put so much thought into it. and. I don't know how I like typing on it yet. You know, we'll find out and how it affects typing feel and all that. I'm sure, you know, it's going to offer you a very, very stiff experience because there's no flex at all. At all. And honestly, the first time I saw the Zephyr, so again, you have to understand that this is my second time looking at the Zephyr of all the parts and everything. So if I look kind of not excited, it's not because it's not cool. It's just because that it's my second time looking at it. So maybe I'm not as excited or whatever. So... The PVD plate, the PVD coating is done very nice. All right, I'll probably have to wipe this before I build with it. The, the PVD coating is very nice, but I remember that one, we had a problem with the switches being kind of loose, so we'll find out, we'll try it out right now. Okay, let's grab one. Okay, so, unfortunately. I also wonder if it's a PVD coating problem. Cause you know, if they want to coat it in PVD, which you know, adds a a a, a a fraction of a millimeter, then they have to give more space when they CNC. They have to cut it. This the cutouts to be little, slightly larger so that when they coat it, it makes up for the difference. But you will see that the switch isn't perfectly fitted. It's not bad, and it's not. It's better than a lot of plates, but it is it is not incredibly tight. Also, Wilba, how's it going? So we were just we you know we're talking about the Zephyr. We we mentioned Wilba just now. We talked we showed his his logo on the Z65 PCB. So for those of you who still don't know, Wilba is the designer of the Zephyr, the PCB and the board. Actually, it's not often nowadays that you get someone who designed both the. Basically everything on the keyboard. So, it's pretty cool.
You kill someone this plate. Yes, the plate itself is, is very thick and heavy. We can we can actually weigh this thing. Thought those were burn marks. Wait, uh Pongy, what were you talking about? Which parts you thought were burn marks? Heatlock says, got down with soldering on my Zeo 60 and four switches on the left side didn't register in switch hitter. I'm down, I forgot to solder them. Oh man, that, that would freak me out. Okay, so you can see when you put your switch in, because of how thick the plate is, it's five millimeters thick, which is, you know, it basically covers up all the space between the plate and the PCB. Look at that. So the switch just has the Basically, the whole body of the switch is covered. Which, again, is really cool. Uh, but you will run into problems with some switches. So with Cherry-style switches, it's really nothing nothing wrong. You know, if you need to take them out, it's whatever. I believe box switches has problem with, with the, this plate. So, when you try to take the box switch out... Okay, maybe this one's fine. Uh, let me grab a new box switch. I have new box switches. So this happened when I was desoldering Chewy's Zephyr. He had, I think, Novilias on it or something like that. And so they would kind of get stuck on the plate. And again, this is a problem that was with the box switches. Not with the, not, you know, I wouldn't call it a problem with the plate. But it, you basically have to use a lot more force to, to yank the switch out of the plate. And so it was really scary when I was desoldering it because it felt like, you know, it, it just feels like the same... It feels the same as when you have a little bit of solder left on the pins. So if anyone here has done desoldering, you know how scary that feels. You're just like, oh my god, am I about to rip the pad off the PCB or socket off the PCB? Okay, see, so the cherry switch or a cherry style switch or whatever you want to call it. I apply force to it. Show it here. This comes right off. With this though, box switch. See how something gets caught? See, I'm actually, I'm actually pulling. I'm actually trying to yank it out. But something actually gets caught. And it is basically, if you look over here on the underside, see these two little things that stick out? That's what's getting caught. And if you've built with boxes, you know they're kind of annoying because those things are, so the plastic itself is, is quite, a, quite a stiff plastic. And see, so. If you're trying to pull the switch out, you're gonna basically just break the whole thing. It's not flexible at all. And these things stick out a bit too much. So yeah, so first of all, you shouldn't really be using box switches anyway because they're gonna break your keycaps. But I would really advise against using box switches on the Zephyr plate just because of things like that. I, I guess if, if you don't care about desoldering and you don't care about, you know, you're never going to desolder it, then sure, do whatever you want. I actually need, I need to turn on the fan. It's getting super hot in here. So it is winter, right? It is 76 degrees Fahrenheit in my room right now. Or in the coolest part of my apartment. So it's probably even warmer in here. It's probably 80 in here. In the coolest part of my apartment, it is 76. So, very hot. And no, they have not fixed box switches, unfortunately. Alright, so, if you want to see the, I was talking about the construction. There is a, a, a an exploded view of the, the board, but you can see. 
So it does sort of look like it, it, it uses, you know, the dovetail locking mechanism, but not really. It's see, it's got these cutouts here, and then the top. So just go over it, and then it is a essentially a sandwich mount, essentially, but the whole mid piece, the whole mid layer, is it's like. The plate is the Oreo, the Oreo cream, the cream of the Oreo. So yeah, so I'm always a fan of seeing people try new things with their custom keyboards. So this is super nice to see. And the people who have Zephyr say they really like typing on it. We'll find out how it feels. Uh, it is unfortunate that my friend God never got to type on it, on a Zephyr. He didn't end up building his. Because he's tried a lot of things and so I would trust his opinion because he's he has built a lot of boards with the same switch setups okay and then this is not the the only cool thing about the the the, the, the main reason why you don't see thick plates a lot is because of the extra challenges you face so you can see you need to CNC out other things to, to make the switch fit uh, things need to be cut so it's not just the switches it's the stabilizers as well and you will see that it's got these special you. cutouts for the stabilizers it's even got these two little semicircle cuts that's for the stabilizer wire it's pretty cool and almost one year anniversary 100 milli thank you so much 10 months in a row thank you thank you and 100 milli is actually going to make a trip to dallas next month i believe and so i'm trying to get him to be here on stream and so we're gonna we're gonna make that happen but yeah so this plate is actually again analyzing might be disappointing uh, but the plate the, the the design the 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 execution all done you know pretty nicely and I think that when you do take this thing out honestly you can, I remember when I first took the okay. So my first impressions of the Zephyr when I was desoldering Chewy's de, uh, Zephyr. At first, I was disappointed with the the anodizing, and then I took the parts out, and then when I got to the plate, I was like, man, this, you know. You like to think that that you're not affected by by dumb things like oh you know some people think that heavy means better quality right that's why a lot of popular mice are very heavy and stuff like that and people just add randomly add weights into things watches as well some people just want a heavy watch and yeah but you take this plate out just, and it really feels like quality especially when you have the when you have it up against the pcb and you have the switches in it it, it feels nice So let's show you how the plate and PCB go together. Damn, I want Oreos. I've not had an Oreo in a long, long time, actually. See, so when you put the switch in, you'll see there's basically no room left between the plate and the PCB. There's no gap anymore. So if you have worried about, say, you know, hollowness, you know, how, how you know, you're like, oh man, I need to fill up that space between the plate and the PCB. Well, you don't need to do that here because it's filled up, but there's just no space. Look at that. There's no room over here. Rens Pones, how's it going? Radius says, the little white plastic claws always shear off when I install box switches. Yes. And every time I try to remove them, that this, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, but that locking thing in the front side, this little part for box switches always just snaps off when you, when you pull them out of plate. 
because the plastic is not flexible enough it just kind of just it just cracks and just breaks but yeah so the plate pretty cool uh, with stabilizers we'll see how it works with stabilizers when we do the build do I have some stabilizers right now that I can just pull off to show you maybe I have Let's see okay yeah I can just use this Super old build. Man, see, you wanna see how old it is? This build, this this board that I have up here on the shelf with just the PCB and stabilizer is so old. Look at that. You see this white stuff? It's so old that someone actually made a stabilizer lube guide on YouTube with this method. Now you can still see that white stuff. So this was this was a long, long ass time ago. This was finish line extreme fluoro. Absolute garbage. So okay, let's put it in the PCB. I'm just gonna show you how the the anti-stabilizer wire popping mechanism thingy works, or whatever. I don't remember the full name for it. I've got the stabilizer here, and again, this question always gets asked. Basically, if you look at a stabilizer, you're trying to figure out where the wire goes. The wire goes in the bigger hole. That, that, that's basically. So, you can see this is what it looks like with the plate over it. Man, I, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm so fucking paranoid this thing. I'm gonna move this out of the way because I am. Maybe I need to move this out of the way. Because how heavy this thing is, I am so worried about dropping this, this plate. Like just having it slip off and then just fall on the Zephyr. Oh boy, I. I do not want to have to pay for that, but you can see, okay, so the stabilizer cut over here on the plate itself. You put the stabilizer over there. You can see that it goes where the wires are, so these little cut ups for the wire. So yeah, really cool stuff and then I think I actually tried to, to push the wire out and it I think I wasn't able to do it so what I did was I grabbed a pair of tweezers and then I tried to push the wire out to pop it out of the housing and yeah there's just no not enough room for me to do that so I don't know if it is completely secure for, you know, if it, for the, the wire and whether or not it's still possible for the wire to just pop out itself. But I know that you cannot do it manually for sure. But yeah, so, so that's really cool. Again, these are, these are, you know, these are things that weren't marketed very well, I would say, honestly, when the Zephyr, the first run was, was happening there wasn't a lot of talk about this people were mostly concerned about oh it's got a five millimeter brass plate oh it's got rgb like people were just thinking about that instead of uh, all these other things we wait to play oh yes that's what we were trying to do right okay let me do that you gonna take the desk mat off though a bit premium for that five millimeter plate well you only get one option and I mean this thing is like 
Was it five fifty or six hundred shipped? I think five fifty before shipping, right? Something like that. So you pay a price premium for sure. How much of it goes to the plate? I don't know. I would assume quite a bit. Yes, they all come with the the, the same plate. Not a lot of options with the Zephyr. You just get to pick the colors and what sort of accessories you want of it. And that's it. Everything else is made exactly the same. PCB is the same. Uh, I think yeah, you just get to pick the colors and that's it. To get another one of these i really like this dust mat the next time the drop happens i might just buy another one of these with this co exact color because this one's getting kind of dirty unfortunately because we use it all the time so and daredevil how's it going daredevil are you going to the dallas meetup Month. Okay, deafness. That's way the plate. One pound seven ounces for a plate. That is. 663 grams a standard aluminum plate for 60% universal is 42 grams the zephyr plate 663 grams key count number one aluminum plate Yes, I just have these places lying around right now. 95. Zephyr, 5mm brass plate, 663. Right, that's. This thing's probably heavier than the N Pro. Just the plate. How much is the tofu weigh? Um, you'll have to see the unboxing for it. I mean, do you want to see the whole build? I'm not going to take the case out. I'm pretty sure I weighed it in the unboxing for the tofu case. So this is with, you know, PCB, no plate though, PCB, switches, keycaps. 1090 gram. So I'm assuming with just the tofu, yeah. Just a tofu display gets awfully close to the weight of that whole case. So let's put this thing just back together in the zephyr and all that. And then we'll have one thing done, one more thing to, to look at. Did you manage to get your hands on a DC60? No. I, I can show one off on stream. I have a friend here in Dallas who bought one, but I ended up getting the wrong color. If you, I think if you are familiar with that group by you will know that a lot of people got wrong colors and stuff and wrong orders and it is a huge mess apparently. And so she got, she was supposed to get a silver or a gray and then she ended up with a purple. Ended up with a purple and no brass plate. And so there's just a lot of trouble going on right now about, oh, you need to ship yours back first before I ship you your correct order, blah, 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 just all these things. And people are like, I just, I don't want to deal with that shit, right? I, I just want to just give me a partial refund or something like that. But yeah, this is a whole thing going on over there. I don't even know what's happening. There we Dick. Have a good night. See ya. Thanks so much for being here. You received yours. Okay, so did, was there anything wrong with yours? Did you get the right order? Actually, let's screw this one back. Well, 
What is silver and red? Oh no, what happened? What happened? I'm kinda scared. Got nickel silver and he got me a white upgrade for free. Wait, 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 wait. So you end up getting silver and white? Or did you just get white? Red was sold out. But yeah, so yeah, lots and lots of issues with that buy. Kind of glad I didn't join it. Yeah, I think sold out meaning they probably just shipped out red to the wrong people. I don't even know how that happens, right? Like, damn. It's not cheap stuff, you know? Like, if it's something that's like five bucks, I get, you know, maybe you're just like, all right, you know, let's just, let's just go. But then, you know, when you do, when you convert everything into to Red Wing P or whatever, it's, that's some money, man. One in a million, I think you've had too much to drink. So if you're gonna ask me what how what I would grade this anodizing at, you know, again this this this, this rating isn't completely accurate. Please take it, don't take it too seriously. But say say if the tofu is a nine, I don't even give the tofu a ten, cause it's not perfect. It's it's the closest I've seen to to, to perfect, but it's definitely not. Uh, you know, maybe one day I'll see perfect, right? And now I can give it a ten, but. The tofu, if the tofu is a 9, this is a 6. I wouldn't even give it a 7, I'd give it a 6. So close to 7. Uh, it's definitely closer to 7 than 5. You know, it's, it's not bad, it's just, it's just average. It's, it's really not amazing. It's moved though, but it honestly it really doesn't matter too much to me if it if it smooth feels smooth but it looks like shit. You know, but, nah. Get into end up or another TKL from the from is it Elf that's running a DC sixty. Yeah, so this is the. Zephyr, let's put some of these things back in there. All right, time to put it back in the packaging.
Love what Zeal did with the stab wires. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. I think that this is one of the best ways I've seen stabilize this shit. I love it. I absolutely love it. Because, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of vendors, what they do is they just... They don't even disassemble it. They just put it... It's all assembled and they just ship it just loosely in a bag. And, yeah, it gets bent and stuff like that. Yeah, packaging is definitely great. Uh, I do wonder how much of it goes, how much of what you're paying for goes into just the packaging. I think, I think I have been pretty consistent with, you know, my disinterest in packaging. I think that, you know, you can do a good job, sure, but I don't really care for going over the top of it. All right, see you on in a minute. Enjoy Bird Box. Are you being paid for by by Netflix to push this? I swear to God, man. There's definitely something going on over there. All right, we've got the 